next, we're fighting for wins. The Cinderella story is over, man. This game ain't gonna be played in Hollywood. It's gonna be played on the grass. Right? It's gonna be played on the grass. Rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance. Today, we talk with our pads. You talk with your helmet, right? Every moment. Let's go. So Colorado finally went down today uh, in crushing fashion. They went down to Oregon uh, 42 to nothing. Dan Lanning came in. Remember, he was talking trash a month ago where he was, you know, you know, he was basically getting that D.I. Because a lot of these guys are jealous. And I'm explain to you why. We already knew that um, they was only slated to win two games this season. I, I, I told everybody it wasn't going to be Oregon. They're not ready yet. They're not big in the trenches up front yet. But, um. As you can see in the beginning of the video, you know, he was in the, in, in um, Dan Lanning, uh, Oregon's coach, was, you know, hyping his guys up and getting them ready. And they came out ready to play. I mean, you know, th these are blue chip players. Uh, Dion just getting it. This is his first year. He got 83 new players. Um, a lot of people are casual fans and don't understand football. But let's check out the press conference with Shador uh, uh, speaking. And then we'll, then we'll go on into... Uh, Coach uh, Sanders. Uh, I'll say that it's just, I was on the too long. Oh, no, obviously we're not satisfied whenever uh, we don't put up the numbers and, you know, be effective to open up the passing game like that. But that has a lot to do with, just knowing the read keys and stuff like that, and just me personally missing read. Really, everybody, everybody understood what what happened. Everybody understood what transpired. So, um, it's really let's just get locked back in. Let's understand. What Thank the Lord for allowing all this to transpire. It's a good old fashioned butt kicking. It's no excuses. No nothing. Um, their coaches did a heck of a job preparing their team. Obviously, we didn't. That was good. I mean, that was a really good old-fashioned butt kicking. Uh, we went into the game wanting to dominate several, wanting to dominate several phases. Um, we lost offensively, defensively, as well as special teams. That fake punt kind of, kind of got them really rolling, and uh, they didn't stop um, ever since they secured that first down. Well coached team, uh, Bo Nix played his butt off. Defensively, they presented some things that I guess we just couldn't get around. We couldn't advance the ball rushing or uh, throwing the ball as well. Seemed like they had our number. But hats off to their coaching staff and their head coach. Great job and they're truly prepared. How you doing, Eric? Excellent. No, you can't wipe the slate clean. You got to watch the film and evaluate. I'll do that on the plane, but I, I saw a lot of it live. Just uh, players that went in position that didn't do the job that we expected. You evaluate players, you evaluate coaches, you evaluate everything when it's a game of that nature. And you had no opportunity to win, period, from the kickoff on. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, you don't need to hammer home a player. A player knows. I mean, he could fool himself and trick himself, but when he looks at the mirror, he knows what he's looking at. Um, something like this is, is I'm not going to say, you know, people around the country would say, this is what they needed to humble themselves. We wasn't arrogant or whatever. We just, we're confident people. If our confidence offends your insecurity, that's a problem with you. It's not us. Uh, we expect to do well. We expect to play well. We expect to win every game we step out there. We expect to practice to perfection and go out there and uh, execute the things that we practice. We just didn't do it today. <clears throat> well, and, and like, this is the thing I need guys to understand. Dion is going to come under, it's going to come under a lot of pressure from the establishment because what he's doing is shaking the game up. He's changing the narrative. Dion is, is most dangerous, not just on the football field. See, I want the casual fan to understand something. Dion is a problem when it's, when it's going to come to recruiting. And transfers through the portal. See, go, coming to next year and the year after next, and these coaches already know 
This is why he's getting the heat that he's getting. The coaches already know that Dion can't beat them right now. He knows. They, they know that. They have the speed. And you can see, you can see the level uh, uh, on the field for those that really watch the game, the, the speed, the level of execution, everything. But he came here to a team that was 1-11. And, and he has 83 new players. He has a whole bunch of new coaching staff. Uh, coaching staff. He came in first game, beat TCU. That wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't supposed to happen. So people got to, people, the casual football fan that don't understand football, you have to get uh, uh, edge rushers, guys that can get at you off the off the edge. You got to get an offensive a tackle that can protect uh, uh, your quarterback. So they got to they got to they got to get get some good recruits, some good big guys to come in that can protect the quarterback, that can open up holes so they can get the running game going. Because in football, it starts up front in the trenches, and right now they're they're lighting the behind in the trenches. They got skilled players. But the skilled players can't execute the way that they want because the plays are being broken down up front. So now when you see them play against Oregon, you see them about to go play against uh, USC, they're going to get exposed. And Dion knows this. But the casual football fan that just watch football just for entertainment don't understand this. They don't understand this. So, and this is why I'm here to explain to, explain to you that watch Dion in the up and coming years uh, in a recruiting class because that's where he's going to be dangerous. And that's why the coaches don't like him because now he's, remember I told you, you're cool and we love you, Dion, when you're entertaining us. But now we got to compete against you and you come and put superior coaches around you and you're able to go into uh, families' living rooms and recruit children that we would want to get. Now Dion's a problem. Uh, Dion in Colorado, they have everybody watching college football again. The ratings is through the roof now because of Dion. So I just, you know, I just want everybody to understand that don't look for Colorado this year to win like 12 games and all. It's not going to happen. They're going to lose a lot of games. They're going to lose a lot of games. But they won more, they won more games this year than what they was expected to win already. But you got to understand something. He has 83 new players and all new coaches coming in there. The coach kids, the coach kids that they don't even know yet, that they just getting to know and, and, and see on the football field. So it's going to take time. Where Oregon's players and USC, these guys have been together three, four years. All right? So this, this video is for the casual football fans, man. Leave your comments in the comment section. Subscribe to Street Media TV. Remember, I love y'all. To the next time, peace.